INEC rules out any change in order of 2023 elections and NNPC embarks on aggressive youth mobilization ahead of next year's election. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Annako. The National Commissioner and Chairman of the Information and Voter Education Committee of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC Festus Okoye, has spoken on emerging threat to conduct the credible polls next year. Okoye said the Commission has rejected calls for a reordering of the sequence of the general elections in a bid to stop any form of malpractice. A civil society group had on Saturday called on the Commission uh, to reorder the election, saying that the 2023 polls should start with the governorship elections and not the presidential election as contained in INEC's timetable, noting that the reordering was necessary to avoid any disruption that might arise from the conduct of the presidential polls. Who are joining us to break this down live dis to discuss the matter is Festus Okoye, he's the National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education for INEC. Thank you so much, Mr. Okoye, for joining us. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Let's start with the concerns. Uh, a lot of people have wondered, um, you know, how, for the want of a better word to use, watertight INEX um, security band around the elections for 2023 is because so many concerns have been ra um, raised, especially um, the ones that um, had to do with reordering the sequence of the election. But thank goodness you have come out to say that well, it's not necessary because you have everything in control. But let's start by looking at the issue of the beavers. Many would say that this is somewhat of uh, a technological uhuru for Nigeria. Um, but we've seen the beavers work during the Anambra elections also. We've seen it um, in the Akiti and Oshun elections. But then these are just states. Uh, the 2023 elections will be happening simultaneously across the country. What assurances do we have in that regard? The Commission has already delivered uh, the beavers uh, for the 2023 general elections uh, to over 23 states of the Federation. The use of the beavers uh, for the conduct of the election is not an object of discretion for the Commission. The law, as of today, which is the Electoral Act uh, 2022, makes it mandatory that the beavers shall be used for purposes of voter authentication and accreditation. And if there's issue of overvoting in the electoral process during election, the overvoting will be determined by the data of accredited voters during the election. So the norms of the BIV is akin to the non conduct of the 2023 election. And this country cannot afford a data loss uh, so we are going to use the beavers uh, for the conduct of the 2023 general election. Sec secondly, the issue of the durability of the beavers and the issue of the robustness of the beavers uh, is not a very good issue. We used the beavers in the Kitty governorship election. There were no complaints. We used it in the Osh governorship election. There was no complaint. And we have used it for over 105 by elections that we have conducted, uh, we didn't record any issue. Yes, there were issues during the Anambra Township election, and there were issues during the FCT uh, uh, Area Council election. But those issues, we have overcome those issues. But before we fully deploy uh, for the 2020 regional election, we are going to do mock accreditation in all the states of the Federation and in all the senatorial uh, uh, districts of the Federation. And so we have the things on that round. And if there are challenges, we have uh, our, uh, our registration area technical assistants who are going to deal with these issues. And we are already training them on how to troubleshoot the beavers and how to deal with issues around the functionality of the beaver. And so Nigeria should have no fears whatsoever relating to our capacity uh, to deal with issues that may likely arise. Mm. But if we say that 
uh, issues will not arise. But with every with the introduction of new technologies, uh, there may be one or two issues, but we have the capacity to deal with those issues. Hmm. Let's talk about hacking, um, because these are genuine concerns. People always say that anything that has to do with tech, there's always a right way around it. Um, many people have expressed that concern of a bypass of the beavers. Yes, as much as many have also reason to the defense of the beavers, most are concerned about how high-tech um, um, INEC ha is right now, or like I said at the beginning, what walls you've built around that beaver. And of course, the fact that we're going to be electronically transferring those results. One thing we must understand is that the commission is going to conduct the 2023 general election in 166,846 polling units. We are going to deploy the beavers to all these polling units. We also have 8,809 registration areas. We are going to have redundancies in these areas. Uh, so that if there's any challenge, we can respond and respond. The beavers as a technological device uh, for voter accreditation works offline. And each beavers will contain only the data for registered voters in a polling unit. The beavers only need network for purposes of uh, upload of the uh, a pulling unit level result. In other words, the upload of from PC8A. What we are uploading is the resource sheet called from PC8A, mm -hmm. assigned by the uh, presiding officer, as stamped by the presiding officer, as can assigned by the pulling agents or party agents, and as given to pulling agents and security officers uh, present at the unit. It is that form that will be uploaded. And in terms of the security around the IEC resolve portal, we have fortified our defenses and we want to assure Nigeria that there is no cause for alarm and there is nothing to fear in relation to the security of our of our um, uh, uh, of the guidance we put for for the 2023 election. Let's talk about the fact that many people um, are looking at the beavers being a game changer. To what extent will the beavers change the game come 2023? As much as we've also seen um, the IPAC chairman uh, speaking on the fact that people are saying we should go back to the incident form and drop the beavers in 2023. Um, what sort of game changing will happen because of these beavers? For the average person who does not understand, uh, the beavers. Uh, the beavers has now been classified by the uh, commission as a sensitive electro material. Uh, this is because uh, prior to the introduction of the beavers, uh, the commission used the smart card reader, uh, which means uh, the uh, permanent voter's card uh, 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 that is in the possession of the voter. Uh, but this time around, the beavers means not only the fingerprints, but also read the facial of the impending voter. Okay. So if the impending voter's fingerprint does not pass, uh, the beavers will be used to check the facial of the impending voter. If the beavers, if the, if the fingerprint fails and the facial fails, the implication is that the person who has come to the polling unit uh, to vote is engaged in an entity test and will not allow the person to vote. The commission has retired the incident form. The incident form will never be used in any election being conducted by the electoral management party. Uh, sec secondly, the commission has also retired the smart card reader and replaced it with a more robust technological device uh, that is um, uh, uh, that we use for voter administration and authentication. Uh, so the implication is that only the accredited voters within the ballot uh, paper to vote on election day. And if the ballot paper, uh, or if what has been cast on election day, exceeds the number of um, accredited voters, the result for that particular polling unit will be cancelled. Hmm. Interesting. Now, there are people who have also talked about the, the fact that um, 
let me, let me put it this way. <laughs> People have wondered about PVCs that have not been um, taken or received or come to be claimed by um, you know, through, from the commission. We've heard stories over and over again where people say, oh, a, a bag of PVCs were dumped in gutters, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you've said that the beavers are going to stop all of that ballot box snatching, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to see more vote buying. But do you predict, um, you know, card buying? Because it's like you said, the beavers might have to read the faces of the people, but what other ways do you think that people would try to manipulate this election? And are you ready uh, to also stand against that? Mr. Koye, no. can you hear me? <laughs> all, I, all, I, all I know is that in terms of the electoral process, are you there? It be a useless venture. Okay. You, if you buy potas cars, the implication is that those who whose cars you have bought will not vote in the election, and that is a vote suppression. But if you buy a potas cars, thinking that you can use somebody's identity uh, to vote on election day, that is next to impossibility, because the data in each beavers for each polling unit will be the data um, uh, of only the registered voters in that particular polling unit. And if you come with a, a permanent voter's card that does not belong to you, there is no way your fingerprint will register and there is no way your face will register. And so it becomes an exercise in futility. But you can engage in voter suppression by buying up people's uh, permanent voter's cards and making sure that they don't even come uh, to the polling unit uh, to vote on election day. That is the only way in the voter's card uh, with the um, valuable to any, any buyer. So I've heard of rumors, uh, especially here in Lagos, where um, certain persons go to the market men and women and say, let's see your voters card. We're going to give you a certain amount of money. And on that day, this is what you will do. Uh, if you do not give us your voters card, then um, you may not be able to sell, you know, in the market space. These are allegations, by the way. So these people may not necessarily be buying the cards of them, but they're still obviously um, vote buying one way or the other. Now, we, you and I have had conversations about vote buying and how INEC can reduce the level of vote buying. But it looks like that's uh, one of the most credible options uh, for politicians who are corrupt. And is there anything that the commission can do, especially uh, in the civic space, to... Uh, educate more and more people about that. The issue of educating people on the value of the vote, on the sanctity of the ballot, and also on the power of the PBC is a joint is a joint venture. Civil society groups and organizations must cooperate with the commission and partner with the commission in this venture. Mm -hmm. The media must partner with the commission in relation to this uh, venture. We must find ways and means of naming and shaming and those who engage in this particular venture. But more importantly, we must realize and let people, the, those buyers realize that it is an electoral offense for someone to be in possession of more than one uh, permanent voter's card. And in some of the incidents that we have recorded in places like Cam and in places like Sokuto, the police are already investigating. And very soon, those who were found in possession of more than one permanent voter's card will be charged to court, and the necessary machinery of the law will, be, will, be, uh, uh, will, uh, will, will, will take its course. And so I think that we must get the more education. We must be robust in our um, in, in, in engagement with the political parties. And we must also educate our people on the power and sanctity of the vote, and also on the power of the PPC as something that can change the dynamics of governance and also change uh, uh, certain things in their lives. Let's talk about the fears that people have um, for, for the coming elections. Many people would say that, yes, well, we can applaud INEC for some of the elections that have happened recently, most recently, um, Ekiti and Oshun State. But then how are you restoring the confidence of the people in the body itself? Because some of the fears that people have listed is the fact that some of your workers might be bought off. Uh, in a bid for, you know, these corrupt politicians to get an opportunity to do as they like. But then I don't know how that works. Again, um, 
INEC has tried one way or the other to infuse all of these technologies to see how you can upgrade the election, but how do you get the confidence of the average person to say, well, um, my votes will count this time because INEC is on my side? What, what we have done and what we will continue to do is to learn from previous elections do well and then try to improve on them. Look at those things we did so badly and we jettison them and look for new ways and methods and innovative ways of overcoming them. And also look at the things we have done so well and then we don't need to uh, um, do anything about, about, about them. But you see, for the uh, 2023 general election, we are going to deploy over 1.4 million ad hoc staff, ranging from presiding officers and as a presiding officer one, two, and three, uh, supervisory presiding officers that will be supervising the 8,809 registration area. We are going to deploy monitors, we are going to deploy population officers. These are Nigerians that we come within the fold of the commission as ad hoc staff. We are going to train and train them properly. We are going to make them know that it is an electoral offense for any ad hoc staff who attempt to corrupt or compromise the electoral, electoral process. And we are going to proceed with any person who attempts uh, to um, engage in unethical conduct. The law is very, very strict. And we are going to make it very clear to them that the law will not pay any one of them that attempts to uh, corrupt the electoral process. But we will continue to deploy technology. We are training, um, and we are going to continue to train the ad hoc staff very well, especially in the use of technology so that we will record incidents of a uh, person saying, oh, the beavers has my function, uh, just uh, 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 on grounds of the fact that the person did not invite the training as well. And so we are going to train and train them. And we have also increased the band of the training uh, available to the ad hoc staff uh, in relation to uh, the 2020 regional election. And so we will keep on improving with every election. And we plead with Nigerians. Uh, to keep on engaging the commission. It is through the criticisms of Nigerians and through their engagement uh, with the electoral process uh, that we have made the improvements we, are, we, we have made. And so we continue to improve with every election. And the 2023 general election will not be an exception. Let's talk about, I mean, well, I like what you just said, but many have queried INEX handling of political parties, especially in terms of party funding, making their finances public, not going above, you know, campaign, um, you know, funding limit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, many people would say that, you know, um, you have somewhat treated these parties with some level of fragility and, and, and tenderness, and, and they're wondering why that is and why INEC is not wielding the big stick because it seems like you always take a neutral ground when it comes to being, taking severe sanctions. We have uh, approached our relationship with the 18 political parties uh, differently. First, we engage them. And, and as you realized, just last week, uh, on Wednesday, we engaged with all the political parties during our quarterly consultative uh, uh, meeting with them. We have made it very, very clear to them that all of them must conform to the dictates and letter of their constitution and the law and their understanding. We have also made it very clear to them that the issue of campaign funding and the issue of use of uh, that the issue of campaign funding will be taken seriously by the commission, and we have developed a template uh, to deal with this issue of campaign uh, funding and campaign limits. Secondly, we made it very clear to them that the use of intemperate language and language meant uh, to denigrate ethnic and religious feelings and sentiments will not be tolerated and that we are going to proceed against any political party or any candidate that uses incendiary language or base language or any other language or event meant to uh, 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 incite ethnic and religious feelings and sometimes uh, um, uh, uh, which may sometimes lead to breakdown of law and all that. And so I completely agree with you uh, that there is the need for us uh, to imply, uh, uh, to uh, uh, employ um, the big stick in terms of our dealings with the political parties. But we are engaging them, and they understand what the issues are, and they understand that going forward, 
the commission will employ the uh, apply the full weight of the law against any political party and this candidate that um, uh, offends any of the provisions of the law. Let's talk about the pocket of violence that have taken place either at campaigns or in different states. We saw what happened in Kaduna, in Zamfara. Governments also taking laws into their hands, um, despite what the Electoral Act has to say about fairness when it comes to um, a, a, fair, a level playing ground for all political parties concerned. I mean, um, there were attacks on campaign offices, rallies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and and you, all you have done is urge for arrest to be done. I know that you're not law enforcement, but again, back to wielding the big stick. If political parties feel that they can get away with this because it always happens and INEC always takes the high ground, what, who's to say that we're not going to see more uh, in the future? Uh, as I pointed out, these issues were tabled before the leaders of all the registered political parties that attended the consultative meeting with the Independent National Electoral Commission on Wednesday. And they understand what the issues are, and they understand the implications of um, engaging in political violence. Do they really understand? Uh, when, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Koye. Do they really understand? Because if, you, if, if I know that if I steal, my hand will be cut off. I dare not steal. And if I were to steal, I'd, I'd not steal where someone would see me stealing. But that's why I ask the question again, for emphasis reasons. How much seriousness is attached to this for these political parties to even take it serious in the first instance? They, they understand what the issues are. They understand the implications of what they are doing. And they are also aware that on Friday last week, we had a, a meeting with the heads of all the various security agencies uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the country under the auspices of the Agency Consultative Committee on Election Security. And at that particular meeting, there were certain agreements we had with the various security agencies relating to issues around political campaigns, uh, relating to issues around the use of um, base and incendiary language, relating to issues around uh, 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 trying to exceed the limits place of campaign funding and, uh, 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 and campaign contributions. And so the political parties are aware that we had this meeting with the various security agencies, and they're also aware that there were certain agreements that were reached at that particular meeting. And they're also aware that going forward, it will not be business as usual. Mm. Let's talk about your updated voter register and, of course, those who have registered so far, the amount of people who have been added to uh, the millions that we had registered before now. Plus, um, there are still people who say they've, they've not been able to get their voters card. Give us a breakdown of, you know, for example, those who registered between June and July or maybe January, when are they supposed to pick their cards and, and, um, and then the rest will come after them? Yes, I, I was just saying that... Um on the 12th day of um, November uh, 2022, uh, the Commission will begin the display of the voters' register in the 8,809 8 registration areas and in the 774 uh, local government areas uh, for claims and objections. Uh, at these particular claims and objections, uh, registered voters will have an opportunity of uh, looking at their names and the, their personal particulars to be sure that what we have captured represents who they are. They will also have an opportunity of letting the commission know whether there are names of diseased persons still on the register and whether there are some names that are on the register that are not supposed to be there. And thereafter, we will clean up the register and then make it available to the political parties. Uh, but the chairman of the commission has made a pledge to the Nigerian people that the PVCs, uh, for those who registered, between the 15th day of uh, January 2022 and 31st day of um, July uh, 2022, will be available for collection in November. And during this particular period, we are going to send messages to all those who registered. Uh, we are also going to use the email addresses of those who registered to send emails to them. We are going to do radio and television adverts. We are going to approach traditional and religious leaders uh, to let them know uh, that these PVCs are ready for collection. But let me make it clear. PVCs can only be collected, they cannot be distributed. PVCs must be collected by the registered voters and cannot be collected by proxy. Uh, so as of today, we have printed over 7 million of those PVCs and we are confident that 
by the time we finish the display of the voters register for claims and objections, the PVCs will be ready and we'll move them to the various local governments and then the uh, resident electoral commissioners and the electoral officers may engage in some form of rotation uh, to make sure that the PVCs are available to the people, especially at the grassroots. And we are going to also collaborate with civil society groups and organizations in terms of PVC collection. Okay. Finally, the flooding um, is a major concern. I know we're almost out of time. The flooding in different parts of the country is a major concern for people. And you also know if people had voters' cards, some of those voters' cards have been taken by the flood. What contingency plan is there for INEC? Um, or do you even have any plan? Because, or does that mean that those people will be one way or the other disenfranchised because of some natural disaster? Some of our offices in uh, some of the local governments we are affected. Now, we have also asked our electoral officers uh, to begin to compile the names and list of those who have lost their PPCs uh, with their PIN numbers uh, so that we can replace uh, some of these uh, permanent voters' cards uh, uh, when we are making the other cards available. And uh, so, anybody who has lost his or her PPC as a result of the flooding it should just report to any of the IDEC offices and we are sure the person that we are going to replace the uh, PVC. All right. Well, Festus Okoye is the National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee with the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Thank you so much, Mr. Okoye. Always a pleasure to have these conversations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity. All right. Well, glad to have you on the program anytime. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we shall be discussing the NNPP and its youth mobilization across the country. Stay with us.